This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good Friday morning to you. Today, the doors can open back up for restaurants, bars, and many businesses as 15 Oregon counties drop back down to high risk. It is Mother's Day weekend, and there are lots of big sporting events. Capacity still limited everywhere. We're going to have the details. I can't wait to give vaccines to children two and above. I've got three kids. All three of my kids have been immunized. More kids are getting COVID. It's why many parents are eager to get them vaccinated. The FDA is expected to approve the shots for teenagers. And we talk with a local doctor who wants the vaccine for younger kids too. Brenda, Nina, I appreciate you delivering two of our top headlines this morning. And now I get to deliver one about you and all the moms who are watching this morning. Your day is coming. Mother's Day is Sunday. We will wrap up a week's worth of mom coverage this morning here on Sunrise, getting ready for Mother's Day. And we're asking again this morning because we have gotten so many terrific responses. What is the best advice your mom has given you? You can text us this morning with your response, 503-226-5088. Yes, good morning to you on this Friday. Okay, Rod, give us a lowdown. You've got Timberline pulled up. What's going yes. on? Yes, so I want to paint the picture that the air aloft is chilly. That's going to feed an active uh, shower day. How cold is it? Well, we've got snow at Timberline this morning, and at times we've seen the winds whipping what has been two inches of new snow around pretty good up there. It's 24 degrees. Now, that cold air mass triggering showers. There's a hefty shower right now coming out of McMinnville. Might uh, move into the Canby uh, near 12. Alton and Wilsonville area right now it's dry in downtown, but we are expecting a fairly active shower day heavy at times right now 49. Look at the temps. Maybe we don't make it to 60 today. I'll have your complete weekend forecast coming up. All right, Rod, thank you. Well, today is the day that so many restaurants, businesses and sports teams have been waiting for Multnomah, Clackamas, Marion and 12 other counties move back down one step into high risk. That means at this point, no Oregon counties are in extreme. Take a look at the map. All of that red is gone, replaced by orange in the high risk. The move is because hospitalization rates for COVID dropped just enough, like 0.1%. And moving back to high risk, though, does not mean the doors are wide open. There are still limitations on capacity. Let's bring in Bryant Clerkley this morning because this means restaurants can again seat people inside. It's a big deal for Mother's Day weekend. What are some of the other changes we might see? Uh, good morning, Nina, and this is a big deal. Great news. Restaurants can have 25% capacity inside. Gyms can have up to 50 people, and the Portland Timbers and the Thorns can have 15% capacity or 3,800 people. Governor Kate Brown took several counties out of extreme risk because there was not a 15% increase in the seven-day hospitalization average over the past week. Last week, Oregon, Oregon only saw a 14% 9.9% increase. This is a relief for a lot of businesses, but the back and forth has been very frustrating. On Wednesday, we spoke to we spoke with Patrick Murphy, the owner of the old barn on Barber Boulevard here in Portland. This sort of on and on, on again, off again notion uh, just doesn't work. You know, I, I I'm not sure that the people that are making those decisions really understand what goes into running a business. Uh, I know they know, I know they're running the state, uh, but I think that's a different animal. Uh, and just the notion of being able to turn a light switch on and think things are going to be great uh, just isn't how it works. Uh, and supply chain becomes a huge issue. Uh, I went to one, two, four different places today just to buy uh, a variety of products to try and make sure we have everything I think our customers are going to ask for uh, when we open on Friday. As for the state of Washington, they did not change their reopening status, so Clark and Skamania counties can keep restaurant capacities where they are, which right now is at 50%. And Governor Brown did say that with the current vaccination levels, we should not have to return any counties to extreme risk uh, for the duration of the pandemic. But if hospitalizations do go up, then the governor might have to reassess things. Back to you guys. Bryant, thank you. 
Here are the latest COVID vaccination numbers. More than 1.96 million Oregonians have gotten at least their first dose. That's about 46% of the state's population. In Washington, more than 3.68 million people have gotten their first shot. That's about 48%. Well, next week, the FDA could approve Pfizer's vaccine for kids as young as 12. There is a meeting set for next Wednesday to address the two biggest issues when it comes to the vaccine in kids, how effective it is and how safe it is. We talked to a local pediatrician about getting kids vaccinated. Dr. Brad Olson, you see him right there. He's the medical director for Randall Children's Pediatric Care. He told us in the early days of the pandemic, he really didn't see kids getting sick, but now that older people have gotten their shots, young people are the ones driving transmission. Dr. Olson says the only way we're gonna get out of the pandemic is to get more shots and more arms, and he says that includes kids. So we're away from herd immunity. And really the only way that we get there is by uh, having vaccines that are available to the entire population. I can't wait to give vaccines to children two and above. I've got three kids. All three of my kids have been immunized. Dr. Olson says he hopes to see vaccines approved for even younger children. We're talking kids younger than 12 by the fall. Fall, of course, is back to school time, and that's what Oregon's Republican legislators were talking about yesterday in Salem. They announced a new bill that would require in-person learning next school year. Most school districts have already said they're going to do that. Basically, this bill mandates what most districts in the state say again they're going to do. Get those kids back to full-time learning in the classroom. But the Republican sponsors say they want it clearly spelled out because they say the governor and the Department of Education have changed the rules too many times. And that means that our schools might want to reopen, but if the Department of Education comes in again and changes the rules, it could affect that. We need to give them certainty, and this bill does that. We didn't see any Democrats at that news conference yesterday, but the Republican sponsors of the bill say it does have bipartisan support. For example, they say Democratic Senator Betsy Johnson from Scapoos has already signed on to the bill. But we have not... New overnight, one person was killed when their car crashed into a power pole at Southeast Sandy and Killingsworth. There was another person in the car, but they should be okay. The issue now, damage to the pole is threatening power lines. Utility crews are making repairs right now, so traffic is blocked in that intersection. A budget battle is underway over Portland's street response. It's a program that launched in February, and it's where instead of police, the city sends teams of crisis counselors and paramedics to some calls involving mental health and addiction. They're testing the program in only one neighborhood, but the mayor and one other city commissioner now disagree on when to roll it out citywide. Portland Street Response is operating in Southeast Lentz neighborhood. It was supposed to expand citywide next spring. City Council set aside $4.8 million to make that happen. But Mayor Ted Wheeler's new budget proposal only has funding to keep the Lentz testing going and not enough to go citywide. He wants to wait and review the data to see if it's working. Commissioner Joanne Hardesty wants to sign off on the whole budget amount and go citywide with the program next spring. The community is just thirsting for Portland Street response, not only to roll out city wide, but to be successful. So we're having an opportunity to collectively make sure that the budget reflects our values because it is a moral document. This budget signals city Council had a long public hearing on the issue this week where they heard from a lot of people. Congressman Earl Blumenauer and Senator Ron Wyden even added their thoughts, tweeting support for Hardesty's plan to go citywide. The final vote on the city budget is set for next month. Beyond the street response debate, there are plenty of other things to dig through in the mayor's budget. And our team at The Story with Dan Haggerty took a closer look. The mayor's budget proposal dedicates millions to cleaning up trash and graffiti in the next year and to try and tackle homelessness. Let's take a look. The mayor has plans to spend $5.7 million to clean up trash in parks and neighborhoods across the city. 300,000 of that would go toward paying homeless people $20 an hour to clean up trash. Another 1.2 million would be set aside to clean up camps. He also wants to allocate millions to helping with homelessness. 
including $2 million going toward building new shelters, another $2 million for hygiene stations around the city, and $250,000 specifically set aside for transgender people who are homeless. There's also $3.4 million in the mayor's budget for cleaning up the graffiti that's all over the place and half a million for businesses that have had vandalism and damage over the past year. The Portland police, well, they aren't going to be seeing an increase in money. In fact, if the mayor's proposal is approved, they'll be losing a whole lot of it. Overall, PPB would lose about $9 million. Wheeler does want to give PPB a one-time influx of $5 million in order to quickly hire 30 new police officers. That's because there's already a shortage of officers, and the Bureau says they're going to lose even more of them over the next few years. And the mayor wants to add 22 unarmed community safety officers. They would respond to non-emergency calls during the day. The mayor says the city has lost more than $100 million in the last year, but that we're getting federal money to help us out. Commissioners are now going to review the mayor's proposal, and they're set to vote on it next month. We'll let you know what happens. All right, a couple of sports stories now before we get back to Rod's weather forecast. Starting with the Blazers, they're back at home tonight after winning five out of six on the road. They've got the Lakers at Moda Center this evening. Big game, to say the least, because these two teams are tied in the Western Conference standings right now with just over a week to go before the playoffs begin. And multiple reports say LeBron James will not be playing tonight because of an ankle injury. Tonight, of course, also the first time in 14 months that fans will be able to watch a game at the Moda Center. Not a lot of fans, only about 10% or 1,900 will be there, but fans nonetheless. Tip off tonight set for seven o'clock. And it will also be a big weekend of soccer at Providence Park. Fans will be there as well. The stadium is allowed to hold up to 15% capacity for a pair of games. On Sunday, the Timbers will play host to the Seattle Sounders. That one starts at noon on Sunday. But up first, on Saturday, it's the Thorns taking on Gotham FC in the National Women's Soccer League Challenge Cup Final. The Thorns earned the right to host this match after going unbeaten through the tournament so far. That one starts early tomorrow at 10 a.m. Oh, they're incredible. Love to see them play. Okay, Rod, how's the forecast for the Blazers fans heading out tonight? Uh, tonight, scattered shower chance, but that shower chance probably diminishing once the sun starts to go down a bit. So not, not going to be anything steady out there, certainly. Here's a look at uh, what's going on. This kind of hole in the satellite picture where you don't see much. That's a cold air pattern. You can see the scattered showers firing up, moving in. This is the atmosphere warming. And those are clouds that will be arriving tomorrow, and that continues a rain chance. So we talked about this earlier in the show. We've got scattered heavy showers out there. We have snow down around 3,500 feet today in the Cascades. Here's a shower that's left McMinnville. Newburgh, good morning. It's right in the middle of where you are. And the yellow indicates some pretty hefty rain amounts coming down with those showers. 49 in Portland right now. It's 47 up in Kelso. We generally have 40s out across eastern Oregon as well. Uh, temperatures, Salem, Corvallis, McMinnville getting up to about 60. Don't be surprised if you hear something that sounds like thunder today. Winds will be breezy at times, 5 to 25 when you get a heavier shower moving in. And then as you go north, temperature is a little bit cooler, maybe only 57 for a high in Battleground in Kelso Longview. Tomorrow, 62. It's clouds, chance of a shower. We'll get some breaks today, but I think tomorrow's overcast. I'm still saying Mother's Day. I haven't changed it. Generally dry, but the shower chance is not zero with a high in the mid-60s. All right, Rod, thank you so much. Well, all eyes are on the sky as we learn more about an out of control Chinese space rocket that's expected to crash back to Earth this weekend. Problem is, we don't know where it's gonna hit yet. And it weighs 23 tons. What we know is coming up. Then after getting the vaccine, when would it be safe to give blood? The blood supply is very low. Our Verify team found it depends on which shot you got. Perhaps most importantly though, Mother's Day is Sunday, right? Let's get to it, moms, because this day is your day and we've been celebrating it all this week here on Sunrise. This has actually been really fun. We asked on Monday, what's the best advice your mom has given you? And the responses continue to pour in. Two really fun ones here this morning for you. The first one comes from a viewer named Kevin Holtzman Sr. He says the best advice his mom gave him was when to go fishing. <laughs> he says his mom was his best fishing partner ever. And then we heard from Kimberly who said her mom's best advice was that pizza is okay for breakfast. I kind of like the sound of your mom there, Kimberly. I would agree with that. 
Uh, how about your mom? What's the best advice she ever gave you? You can text us your responses at 503-226-5088 and we have more from your moms coming up. From the very start of the COVID-19 pandemic, healthcare systems throughout the United States have been trying to keep their blood supply from running out. The uncertainty around COVID-19 caused a brief pause on blood donations. Since the vaccine rollout started, more than 100 million people in the United States are now fully vaccinated. And viewers like Mike W. are now asking, is it okay to donate blood after receiving the COVID vaccine? So let's verify. Our sources, Angela broom Powley, the regional executive of Blood Donor Services for the Red Cross, the Food and Drug Administration, the American Association of Blood Banks, or AABB. At the start of 2021, based on guidance from the FDA, the AABB updated its blood donor eligibility considerations for people who are fully vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccine. People who receive the Johnson & Johnson vaccine can donate blood, but they'll have to wait 14 days. For those who receive the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, there's no waiting period. What's really important is to know which vaccine you receive, to know the name. If you can't tell us when you come in to give which one you received, then we would need you to wait two weeks uh, before giving. So yes, we can verify you can donate blood after getting the COVID-19 vaccine, but make sure you wait two weeks if you receive the J&J &J shot. With your Verify, I'm Gabe Cohen. Let's get to national headlines in your morning rush now. There's a Chinese rocket hurtling towards Earth. It's expected to re-enter our atmosphere tomorrow. Put that on your calendar. But no one knows where on the globe it'll hit. So this all started last week after China launched a rocket carrying part of its new space station. Well, of course, the rockets are supposed to safely fall back into the ocean after they launch. But this one kept going. Astronomers say the chances of this debris that weighs 23 tons hitting a person or a home, they say is extremely slim. So like, don't panic or anything. Um, India is in the middle of a full on COVID crisis right now. The country reported more than 414,000 cases in one day. 
Hospitals and people are scrambling to get breathing machines and supplies as people are dying outside of clinics, in ambulances and cars as they look for help. This comes as the prime minister there is now facing growing pressure to impose a nationwide lockdown. President Joe Biden was in Louisiana yesterday to promote his $2 trillion infrastructure bill. He's proposing $115 billion in roads and bridge spending, promising all of it will go to American contractors, suppliers, and workers. And talk about fine wine. This bottle was aged in space. And for a million dollars, it's on sale. It is a Petrus 2000 red wine, if that means anything to you. It's been aged for 14 months in space. The bottle is one of 12 sent to the International Space Station in 2019 as part of the research into how plants adapt to space conditions. Interesting. And those are some of your headlines. Okay, Drew, we're switching things up on this Friday. I want to let everybody know about it. We still want you guys to feel good, but this time, <laughs> share some of the love with mom. The bottom line is, Brenda, who's better at making you feel good than your mom, yeah, right? You go. <laughs> Moms are all about making us feel good. So this is what we did this week. Back on Monday, we asked, what's the best advice your mom ever gave you? So many great responses. We have more to share with you this morning on this Feel Good Friday slash Mother's Day Friday. Jeff's mom says, <laughs> if he ain't first, your last. A little uh, Talladega Nights there from Jeffrey's mother. Uh, then we have Danny sharing some relationship wisdom that he got from his mom. His mom told him, be best friends with a woman before anything else. So he followed that advice, he says, and he ended up marrying his best friend. Aww. Very cool. All right, Marion's mom says, <laughs> I saw this earlier. I didn't know if we'd share this one or not. Marion's mom <laughs> says, always shave your legs and your armpits and wear deodorant because if you get in an accident, at least you're covered. There you go, fresh <laughs> underwear too. That was an old school. <laughs> and then we have this gem from, uh, I believe it's Bettina Jones. She says, uh, if you're pretty on the inside, then you'll be pretty on the outside. Pretty on the inside means pretty on the outside. That is great advice from a mom there. You can text us your mom's best advice, 503-226-5088 is the number. Da, 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 da. I have Mama's one. boy himself. Oh, go ahead, Rod. Eat cheeseburgers and pizza all day long. You'll be happy on the inside, but round. No, happy on the inside, but round on the outside. Wait a minute. Is this your sense? advice? Because we're That's really just advice. sharing okay. motherly advice. Okay. All right. You are not a mom. Yeah, you're right. Okay. That advice was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Look at these showers. You see the yellow and the kind of orange tan? Those are pretty good downpours. Wilsonville, good morning. Canby, you're just getting into it. Uh, some of this will likely hold together for a while, so it's moving towards you folks in Oregon City, FYI, for a little bit of early morning rain. We have mostly cloudy skies right now, 49 degrees. Here's the Enzo and Bentley. We've had a lot of puppy pictures out at the uh, Wooden Shoe uh, Tulip Farm in Woodburn uh, lately. You use the hashtag KGW Dog of the Day. You post them, we find them, and we will show them off on our show. So we have scattered heavy showers at the coast. The inland western valleys, mainly dry conditions, though, when you bounce over the Cascades today. Everybody's in this cooler air, so look at 5 p.m. temps. And still being well up into the 70s, LeGrand, Baker City, and John Day, only around 50 for a high. The Dow's 58. West winds in the gorge today, humming, gusting all the way to about 40 miles per hour. And there could be some showers popping in the Hood River Valley. And then we have temperatures trying to get up to 60 for Portland and Salem. Some of us will make it, some of us may not. Uh, so sun breaks, scattered heavy showers, overcast light showers around tomorrow. And I still think Mother's Day overall is morning cloudiness becoming partly cloudy, mainly dry with a shower chance and a high of 65. Yeah, I think moms will like that for sure. Thank you, Rod. Have you guys heard about this? There's a trend with Botox and basically it's this start early. It's considered preventative. People are getting the shots before they ever have any wrinkles, but there are some important things to know. We'll connect the dots.
Well, more young people are getting Botox, not to get rid of any wrinkles, but to prevent them. And doctors have something to say about that. Let's connect the dots. It's a trend that's taking over social media called baby Botox. The idea is to soften the movement of facial muscles and prevent the appearance of lines down the road. According to the Washington Post, people ages 20 to 39 were responsible for about 20% of all Botox procedures in 2019. The majority of patients are women, but dermatologists report more and more men are jumping on the anti-aging bandwagon. Preventative Botox isn't the same as erasing wrinkles. Instead, small amounts of the toxin are used on targeted muscles to temporarily weaken them. Also, fewer treatments are needed than with the traditional procedure. If done correctly, that means you'll still have natural facial movement. It just stops you from tensing those muscles too hard. So what do doctors want you to know? First, there isn't a lot of research on the long-term effects of baby Botox, but prolonged use could have consequences. Also, since this is preventative, patients will need to continue getting injections and that could be costly. Plus, since things can go wrong if the procedure isn't done properly, you have to do your research when finding a provider. And remember, there is no such thing as staying young forever. That's connecting the dots. And that might be the best advice uh, from mom if he, <laughs> she ever gave that to you. Yeah, I think it's just social media, you know? Yeah. We're, we're connected mm -hmm. to celebrities in their homes now, personally talking to us. We're staring at them all the time. Yep. Yeah. Y'all out effect. there. Millennials, Gen Z, enjoy your youth. Yes. It's not going to be here Naturally. forever, and, and you're going to crumble when you get to be my age. <laughs> I'm looking at the Buck clock, up. gang. I'm looking at the <laughs> clock. I realize that the uh, 5 o'clock half hour doesn't last forever either. It's now basically over. We got to step aside. 5:30 half hours next.